Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you how to transfer your Kickstart ROM that's inside your real Amiga into WinUAE and that's all without having Amiga Forever or downloading any Kickstart ROM at all from the internet. What are we going to need for this guide? We're going to need obviously an Amiga, I'm using an Amiga 500 Plus. We need to download WinUAE, download in directory Opus you need a GoTech drive and also you need a USB memory stick. So let's get started. So you need to download WinUAE. So just go to uh, the main winuae.net website, go to download, and we're going to be downloading the Zip Archive 32 bit edition. Now, even if you've got a 64 bit machine, you need to download the 32 bit version because it's got some extra things that we need. The next thing you need to do is you need to go to this website that contains D Opus and I am downloading directory Opus 4.1.2. So I've extracted uh, the WinUAE zip file and you end up with a couple of things. So you, in Amiga programs, you've got a trans ROM file. This is an important file that's going to be used for transferring our Kickstart ROM. So if I load up WinUAE, you'll see that it's complaining saying, I haven't got any system ROMs. I haven't got any kickstart ROMs that I can use. And I can confirm this by going to the ROMs tab and then under main ROMs file, it doesn't know about any kickstart ROMs that I've got. The only one it has is a built-in one called AROS and that is open source uh, alternative. It isn't a 100% uh, replacement of an Amiga Kickstart. So you'll find that if you try to run certain games with this AROS Kickstart ROM, things just don't work properly. So it's a good attempt to replace the Kickstart, but it's not 100%. So we're gonna be using this temporarily because at the moment we have no other Kickstarts that we can use in WinUAE. Let's set up a A500 plus uh, configuration. For floppy drive, we're going to tick DF0 and DF1. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the D Opus uh, ADF that we downloaded earlier into DF0. Next, I want to create a blank disk. Now, down the bottom under floppy drives, uh, they've got disk label here. I'm going to call mine uh, my kick start. And then I'll go click on create standard disk. This takes me into the directory where WinUAE is. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in just blank.adf. So this is a blank uh, virtual disk. Let's change the floppy drive emulation to uh, turbo. Next, we're gonna to go to the hard drives and we're gonna add a directory or archive. So we click on that. The device name is gonna be called PC0 and the volume is going to be called PC. And then we click on select directory. And then we need to make sure that we've got the Amiga programs selected and then select folder. That's our configuration set up. Now, I recommend that you go to the configurations area, give this a name. So uh, transfer uh, ROM and then click on save because we will be coming back later on to this setup. Let's load up the configuration and click start. So as you can see, we've got our AWOS development team uh, license in here. This is showing that we're using that AWOS uh, kickstart ROM. So no genuine Amiga kickstart being used at the moment. Now directory opus is opened up. Now I must admit I forgot one little step. So if we just hit F12 under floppy drives and DF1, I didn't actually select our blank ADF. So let's do that now. So there's our blank ADF, click open, and then that's added. So if I click on okay, that should get added. So, oh, a new disk is detected. Where do you want to put it? Let's put it in the right hand window. And there we go, so DF1 is over here and that's showing my kickstart. We need to basically get the trans ROM program onto a ADF image. Now, the reason why we're doing that is because we're using a GoTech on our real Amiga 
uh, which uses ADF files to access things. So that's the reason why we're going through this whole setup. So if I type in PCO on the left here, loads up all the files, there's my trans-ROM, so I'm gonna select that. I make sure that I've got DF1 selected on the right-hand side, which I have. So with this side selected and the trans-ROM selected, I click on the word copy. And then we should find, yep, our trans-ROM file has now been copied to DF1. So that's in our blank ADF uh, image. That's all done for now. So what we can do is we can just quit out of WinUAE and then let's go back to our folder. So we've got two ADFs. We've got our directory opus and we've got our blank ADF, which contains that trans ROM program inside it. So I'm gonna select both of these and I'm gonna do copy. And then I'm gonna to go to my USB stick that I've plugged into my machine. And then I'm just going to paste those two ADFs in there. So we're all ready now to move to the Amiga. So let's do that. So I've got my GoTech drive plugged into my Amiga 500 plus. I'm gonna turn on the Amiga and then I will insert the USB stick and make sure on the display it says D Opus. So directory Opus is loaded. What we now do is just click on close and close the application. Next, what we need to do is right click and then go to execute command. And then we need to type in new shell. Now we need to go onto the GoTech drive, change from the directory opus one to the blank.adf. And then we need to type in the following command. What this command does is run the trans ROM file and it tells it to copy the ROM into a file called kick.rom that's on df0. It will take some time for it to do that and you'll see the progress on the display. Once that's all done, we can now actually close down the Amiga and take out that USB stick, put it back into our PC and let's move on back to our PC. Before we continue, if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to hit the like button, then more Amiga fans like yourself will benefit from this video. Thank you. I have directory Opus still, and I've got my blank ADF file, which now contains my kick.rom file. I'm going to select that, so that's on the memory stick, click copy, and then let's go back to our WinUAE folder. Now we've got a blank ADF in there already, so what I'm gonna do is go paste. Yes, I want to replace this file. Now let's load up WinUAE. Let's load up that trans-ROM configuration that we added. Remember, you need DF1 to have the blank.adf added, and then we can click Start. So we've got directory opus once again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the left-hand side to say DF1. And if we just wait for that to read, there we go, we've got our kick.rom showing up just there that we created on the Amiga. Now on the right hand side, I'm just gonna click on where it says RAM disk, and I'm gonna change here for it to say PC0. There we go, there's our list of uh, Amiga programs. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select kick.rom, and I'm gonna choose copy, and we'll just wait for that to transfer. And there you go, you can see that kick.rom has now transferred into that PCO directory. Now we're done with this, so we can press F12 and quit. And if we now go back into our Amiga programs folder, we'll see our kick.rom is there. This is now our kickstart. So now we can cut that and move it into a kickstart folder. So I'm gonna paste that into there. There we go, our kick.rom. And now I'm gonna load up WinUAE once again. So at the moment, it's complaining that we still don't have kickstarts. We need to actually point it to where our kickstart is now. So let's go to path, and then we've got the folder kickstarts. So we'll just make sure, yep, kickstarts is selected. And then once that's done, it then says scan of ROMs finished, 
a 600 now i don't know if this is unique to my amiga 500 plus but for some reason win ae thinks that i've got an amiga 600 so if i go to the quick start now and i make an amiga 600 config notice it hasn't complained that i haven't got a kickstart rom if i go to the roms there we go it's filled in our kickstart rom 2.05 and then if i click start there we go we've booted up into our kickstart that is how to transfer your real kickstart rom from a real amiga into winuae now you can use that in emulation hope you found this useful